There we go. All right, you guys, we're going to talk about ideation. Okay, that is a fancy kind of term for brainstorming. If you've read the article already, then good. Um, we're going to talk about some of the concepts briefly, and there are examples on the other page, but then I can also just go to ArtStation directly, and we can look at concept art because it is an entire category here. The thing about concept art, though, as a, an umbrella term, is that it means a lot of different things to a lot of people, and it tends to just kind of be umbrellaed into production art or illustration or something like that. I'm going to click just a few of these that look promising to save, and then we'll take a look at the article. Um, although, when I look here, I'm not seeing a lot of what I would call concept art, because usually, to me, concept art is your early designs that are then used to do your production art. And most of this looks pretty finished to me, but that kind of makes sense because people are trying to show off their work on Discord. So they're not going to show you the real concept art right away, but it may be buried inside of some of these. In fact, this one looks more like concept art than most of them. Okay, so. Yeah, okay, so like this is June. I have to go to like previous ones probably. Uh, character design would probably be an easy one. So where would I be looking then? Just uh, at just whatever. Click on one of them, okay. It should just take you to like the, the blog post they make. That has all of them. All right. Let's see. That'll probably be a better way to view actual. So this would be like the finished result, but the farther we go down, likely we're going to see is roughs. Maybe. Someday. The people I follow always have roughs. I mean, at least there's that. That's almost rough. Um, I guess that guy just didn't, or it's just taking forever to load. Let's try. Uh, let's try this guy, because that's a good idea. But we don't know who's going to have done this right. <laughs> These are sort of they, they still look really polished and finished. Oop. Someone there. Okay, well, at least there's some analysis happening. Nope, still too finished. Uh, getting there. It's going to take me forever. More like this. Okay, so at least this is like a rough block in or something. Anyway, let's talk about the idea first. Um, concept art is about making the inspirational designs, images, and um, splash pages that are going to make the production artists feel excited and targeted towards a particular idea. Okay, So a production artist, and I just want to briefly touch on the difference there, is a person who does the boring but important job of doing all the good stuff that fills up a game. So if I click over to game art here, for instance, um, this sort of thing counts as production art, but more like this sort of thing where this is an asset that might go into a game. Someone has to make it. They have to model it. They have to unwrap it and texture it. They have to light it. All of that stuff is important hard work. And most of the jobs in the game industry or even the animation industry are production jobs. They're not design jobs. So that means that this person may have designed this little shrine, or maybe they didn't. But the concept art job is the design job. It's the one where you sort of freely explore ideas without a whole lot of limitation and let someone else worry about making it real. So this image here is a pretty good concept painting. And if you were a special effects artist, you would be looking at the shapes and colors and sort of overlays of texture here on his head, saying to yourself, how am I going to make that run in uh, real time in a game engine? And that would be a big production art puzzle for you you may not be able to achieve exactly this look, and that's pretty typical. Uh, but you would be aspiring to it, right? And then on the body, there's details like a little bit of cloth here and bony but not quite bone fingers and arms, um, armor that looks metal, bits that might move when the character moves, like these hanging capes and little bits here. All of this is information for 
the production workers who are going to variously model and texture and rig and animate and make special effects for this final character in a game. Okay, So I want you guys to know that, uh, that difference between those two different kinds of art. Uh, we're concerned in this class about teaching you both, at least in a very introductory way. Uh, but one of them, the concept one, is meant to be more inspirational, um, really nice looking, and not necessarily completely thought out. The other one is functional, and so it's meant to be very specifically delivered in a um, targeted way, high polish, and not necessarily the most creative because it's got to work. Okay, So that would be the difference between those two worlds. Um, let's talk about ideas really quick. My opinion of ideas is that they don't really matter beyond how excited you are. And that's about it. Um, I have taught a lot of um, animation students and they tend to get really touchy about their ideas. I've noticed that game art students don't get so touchy about their ideas. Um, I don't know why that is. Maybe certain personalities get attracted to different disciplines. But if you've got this idea that is your baby, it is just your favorite thing in the world, oh my god, this is my thing, I'm going to do it someday, I'm going to be a big hit and success, um, probably stop that because it's likely that's not true. Any idea that is executed poorly, no matter how good the idea was, probably won't be something that people enjoy very much unless it becomes a cult classic. And if you take a terrible idea, and give it to someone highly skilled with a lot of experience telling stories or making animations or making games, they can probably make something really great out of that, despite the fact that the idea was weak to begin with. So it's really tough to judge ideas on their own merits because what exactly are you judging? How interesting the idea is? Well, that's subjective. Everyone's going to be interested differently how potentially easily you could turn the idea into a game or a movie or an animation or something like that. Okay, sure, but unless you've got a really clear way of how that is done, you can't say for sure that it can't be done. Okay, If you've got a lot of experience making one of those things, you can say, here's the reason why that might be a problem. Okay, For instance, how about a cartoon, traditionally animated cartoon, about 75 ant siblings all with distinct personalities? Anybody spot a problem with that? Overwhelming. Overwhelming. Not really focused on a particular character means that your audience is not going to become as attached as easily. Also, traditional animation and many, many different variations of something is bad news because it's a lot of extra production time. Okay, So we can poke holes in it, but to say that that's a bad idea just immediately is maybe going too far because we could change things about it. We could lower that number. We could change it from 2D animation to 3D animation where um, replicating something with variations is far, far easier. Um, we could change uh, lots of little things about it to maybe make it easier to produce. But as far as an idea, it's hard to say if one has more value than another. Okay. Any questions about those things just yet? No. Okay. So yeah, the two things I list here. Your ideas can start bad or incomplete, and you can change them by playing with them. That's very, very common. In fact, I encourage it. I think it's better to start with a half-baked, slightly bad idea, and then change it until it's good, than it is to try to come up with a good idea in the first place. The second part you don't need to find the perfect idea because it doesn't exist. I strongly believe that. No idea by itself is just intrinsically good, except in my case, I think wizard school is a really good idea no matter how you do it, just because it's very interesting. Okay, So don't try to find a perfect idea. Find one that will work and then play with it. Okay. How to brainstorm. This is what we're going to try to do for this assignment and what eventually you're going to show me the results of. It can be a good idea to do this in a group, by the way. So if you guys want to use some of the other voice channels whenever, feel free to jump in there and talk to each other and bounce your ideas off of each other because it tends to be a lot easier to do this when you're not in a vacuum. Okay? How to brainstorm. Um, although it's great if you're inspired by an idea early, 
it can cause you to commit too quickly, never exploring interesting twists and additions. This happens all the time. If I say a few random descriptors to you, you are probably going to have some immediate idea that you like fairly quickly. Okay, let's just try it now for a second. Um, cowboys in space. Firefly. So you thought of something that exists already, so that's good. Anybody get an immediate vision of something that you think, oh wow, that would be really cool, I want to make that? Well, happens to me all the time. I started seeing visions of like rocket people with like six shooters, you know, flying around on little miniature spaceships like horses and stuff like that. Just fun stuff, it's fun nonsense, really. Okay? If that happens to you, that's great. Write it down, then try to do something different because you can very easily get locked into one idea if you don't do that. Okay? Also, inspiration is something that people oftentimes try to make happen and you can't. Okay, inspiration happens when it happens. You can't force it, you can influence it, but not predictably enough. So instead, what you should do is have techniques that you can fall back on, okay, or systems for generating ideas that you can use. All right. So here's what I recommend. Um, set limits. Okay, that's what this whole part is here. The first thing I, I think about, if I have a blank page, sky's the limit, I can draw anything I, I want, is, oh, crap. Okay, so here's my blank page, right? And I'm going to erase my little happy face. Someone asked if I changed this to a different cursor because it was hard to see, and now I'm regretting it. I'm going to see if I can do it some other way. Uh, so here's my completely blank page, and then you, someone says the magic words to you, draw something funny. And I go, oh crap, I don't know what to draw. I'm completely stuck, right? And so even just saying funny, right, starts to limit the world of possibilities. Well, now I can't draw something scary, or I shouldn't. Now I shouldn't draw something overly dramatic, right? Now I'm... Pr it, sort of leads to it says like maybe this should be a cartoon because cartoons are funny right maybe it should be a caricature I misspelled it wrong because caricatures can be funny and then what I should do is just pick one I should pick one of those as fast as possible so that I start to build a fence around the area I can explore and then it's a lot easier to explore that area does that make sense to you guys have you guys ever experienced that paralysis? Yeah? Kind of. kind of. Okay. So build some limitations in. Usually we do that by coming up with maybe just a rough idea of what the end result should be like. Like, is it going to be a game? Is it going to be a movie? Is it going to be a comic book? That can start to build a fence. And then what kind of genre is it going to belong to is another really classic question. So we could say, what form will it take? What will the genre be? Who are the people I would like to enjoy this? Right? So we, if we can answer these things, we start to get a thinner and thinner and thinner kind of category that we're trying to fit something into. And then we can do the creative, you know, backflips that are necessary to make something good. Right? So if I say this is going to be a comic, and it's going to be, um, I don't know, let's say horror. Who would I like this to, to enjoy this? We'll say young readers. How do I make a comic horror for young readers? I don't include a lot of really hardcore graphic violence, for one. Um, maybe I use character designs that are a little bit more approachable and cute, but I also include scary things. Can anybody think of something that belongs to this category already? Horror for young readers in comic form? Because they exist. No comic fans, huh? Uh, 
I don't think Scooby Doo is a comic. <laughs> no, it's a cartoon. But what if I just said, okay, cartoon instead? Young viewers. Would that help you guys? Goosebumps? Sure, Goosebumps was like a book series for young readers. For cartoon, we're talking about like. Um, maybe Billy and Mandy or something is like a horror-esque cartoon, although it's very funny at the same time. Or that Hotel Transylvania movie was kind of cartoon horror, right, for younger audiences. The there we go, Courage the Cowardly Dog. But Courage the Cowardly Dog is actual horror because that thing was terrifying. It was very scary. <laughs> okay, so start doing that um, as quickly as possible. Then, once you've got that narrowed down, come up with some random, random subject matter, right? So this means that we're going to try to combine this basic fenced-in area with something else to further limit our possibilities. So we've got a cartoon now in the horror genre for young audiences. Give me any type of setting or any type of person you can think of. Doesn't matter what. Nebraska. Anybody else? Uh, when you say a person, do you mean just like a personality? Or? Surprise me. Uh, Shrek. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? Keep going. Okay, Frosty Snowman. Okay, keep going. I'll let you know when we get one that doesn't work. Alex said an arcade. Said what? Ar an arcade. Oh, an arcade. As I'm writing these down, can you tell that all of these could work? They could all work, absolutely. I mean, there actually was a horror short cartoon Shrek already. But even if we said, oh, okay, that's an intellectual property and just did ogre, sure, we could have an ogre. Sure, we could have a gross, funny ogre that's like Shrek but not Shrek, easily. Could we set it in Nebraska? Yeah, why not? It's a wilderness. So we would kind of have to have characters that are exploring a wilderness or are trapped in a wilderness or are looking for something in a wilderness. Yeah, the woods, right? So that's general. Could we have Frosty the Snowman? Yeah, if he was the antagonist, like maybe they think it's a Yeti and it's actually Frosty the Snowman. Or maybe for some reason Frosty the Snowman is the paranormal investigator of the holiday world or something. And that is kind of comic and horror at the same time because it's a little strange that Frosty will melt in the sunshine. Could we set a cartoon horror for young readers in an arcade. Yeah, absolutely. The arcade machines could be haunted. They could come to life and attack people. They could draw you into their game worlds, whatever. We kind of got Wreck-It Ralph at that point. All of these work. And that's what I normally find about brainstorming is like, I don't think we could come up with something that absolutely wouldn't work. Let's try that. Can you guys name something that wouldn't work? For some reason, just can't. take on real world politics well okay you're changing the genre yeah I guess you're right so without contradicting what, what these three things up here are right cartoon horror young audiences without contradicting those can you come up with a right person or personality or place or setting that just won't work period Court. I don't see why it wouldn't <laughs> why wouldn't it work but they can be scared, right? They can be the intrepid adventurer that we're following along investigating the spooky things happening. They could be the main character. Mm, no, I think you're fine. Possession is okay, but demon might be getting a little bit heavy unless it's a cute demon, but I don't see why not. Right? It's in the horror genre. It's a cartoon. 
for young readers just means we have to be light on the treatment of violence and sexuality and such like, and stuff like that but that's no problem there's lots of little cartoon devils and cartoon ghosts What about him? TV and horror? Um, I don't know enough about him to say that conclusively, but I I don't see why not. Is there a reason why not? He doesn't get scared ever. Okay, but that's funny, right? What about Casper? If he's like, I'm not scared of anything, and there's like really spooky things happening like rawr, behind him, then we've got a cartoon, you know? That's still fine. He's like, I will just punch it. That is sort of my thing. Casper? Yeah, he's a he is a cartoon ghost. So he's already firmly in this category. See, it's tough, huh? Like, you might think initially it's hard to come up with ideas because I'm asking you to list like random things that would work. But when you flip that question around, list things that don't work, it's almost impossible. So that means sky's the limit. Pick whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Every single one of these could lead to a humorous conclusion or a horrifying conclusion that's appropriate for young readers, as long as very small things are tweaked just a little bit. Does that make sense? Yep. So, so what I'm saying basically is don't be afraid to explore ideas because you almost can't do it wrong. There's virtually no way to do it wrong. But you are trying to hone in on a useful result. That's the place where this um, starts to drag a little bit for people is that how do I get towards something that I can definitely use or I'm super excited about? For that, you kind of have to know the mechanics of the, um, of the form that you're working in. So you have to know enough about animation, enough about games, enough about comics to see clearly how this translates. Okay. Until you have more experience, that's just going to kind of be missing a little bit. But without that experience, you can definitely brainstorm ideas. You just have to think generally, could I set it in Nebraska? Why not? Could I have Frosty the Snowman in it? Well, how would that work? Well, he'd have to be kind of cute and kind of scary at the same time, or he would be the vessel for our storytelling and other things would be scary. Right? You have to act a little bit more generally before you have those details. Once you have those, right, a few starting concepts, then you start to tweak and modify them into a shape that is more appealing or you can clearly see will work. And this is the part that relies on kind of a knowledge of how that works. Okay, so let's look again at our little brainstorm sheet. And I like the, the corgi ghost possession thing. Okay, I also like the uh, Nebraska slash woods kind of thing. So let's just use that and try to get details. How would this work with a corgi, some ghost possession, and a sort of semi-wilderness, keeping in mind that our readers are young and it's supposed to be horror? Anyone got an idea for that? Or should I do it? So we could have the Corgi's owners like tour around in an RV or something like that. And the Corgi is the only one that sees like spooky ghosts and things that are threatening the family. It sounds like courage, doesn't it? Like immediately, right? Uh, but he always ends up making friends with them instead. So we got a fluffy little sausage dog with teeny tiny legs protecting his humans of some sort probably want to have some human that can talk to the dog just because that makes it a little bit easier to have some interpersonality play between them but they always end up making friends thinking that they're scary at first and later you know being cool with them there you go there's a concept anyone want to try one Remember, you're going to have to do this for homework. Practice makes perfect. I'm so lonely. I mean, there is an audience, so it's kind of spooky. 
I mean an idea for putting these pieces together differently. Like, here's my idea. Quirky paranormal investigator makes friends with ghosts. Can we put it together differently than that? No? Okay, how about a group of dogs that lives in the woods? We'll just make them like German Shepherd, kind of like dogs, and like Great Dane dogs and stuff like that. Big dogs, you know? But they are menaced by a little corgi ghost. So the corgi is now the adversary. And he's like spooking them all the time. To what end? I don't know. Well, so you wanted to come up with concepts for our arts? I'm coming up with concepts for these pieces, right? These pieces are cartoon, horror, young audience, Woods slash Nebraska, and Corgi and Ghost Possession. Those are the pieces. So I'm assembling the pieces into a concept. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Are you guys sure that makes sense to you? Because I'm getting a lot of silence. So do you want us to come up with something more simple or more complex? More simple so it's clear? We are coming up with an idea. How complex and how simple it is is sort of up to you. Complex tends to not be better. Simple tends to be better. But there will be complexities that you just need to add in in order for us to understand it all. OK? So in this one, I've got some sort of team of dogs for some reason, right? Why? Just because it's a different option for protagonists. Why do we have a team of dogs? I don't know. Maybe there's a pound, right? There's a pound and these guys are like lifers in the pound and it's haunted by this corgi ghost, right? And they're trying to unravel the mystery. So they're in the big house. And it's way out in this bleak wilderness. So it's a little bit more depressing. Yeah, yeah, I drew dog prison, pound. Okay, So this would be a second way to handle that. It could be treated lightly enough. It could have enough horror or fear or at least anxiety. Okay. All dogs go to heaven, a little bit like this. Slightly horror, younger audience cartoon, dogs and ghosts. It doesn't have the woods aspect to it, but all dogs go to heaven is, uh, you know, an older cartoon that has some of these pieces. Okay, So here's the thing. I'm talking about how to brainstorm, how to make ideas, how to put them together, how to build those pieces bit by bit. And it's a personal process, right? Everyone's is a little bit different. If you have a personal process that you like, you can probably already do this. If you don't have one, then you need one, and that's what I'm trying to provide, is I'm trying to give you one that could potentially work. But as you can hear from me doing it, doing it alone kind of sucks. I can actually do it alone, but it's way harder to do alone. Because how do you randomly come up with ideas, you know, these little inputs, when you're the one generating them? They'll all kind of relate to each other, and that's bad. They need to be different because difference is interesting. Okay, let's, let's approach this a different way. What is a typical cartoon plot or cartoon setting? A suburban area. Right, suburbs. So who are our typical characters in a suburban setting? It's gonna be a family, all we have family. Who's gonna be a part of that family? Well, there's gonna be a dad, and there's going to be a mom, and there's going to be somewhere between one and three siblings, and there's always going to be an animal, and we've got Family Guy, right? And we've got The Simpsons, and we've got a hundred other cartoons. It's boring, right? This is very boring. So what could we throw at this to make it more interesting? We gotta throw something completely different than suburbs, family, one to three children, etc. 
What can we do? Uh, they possess forbidden artifacts. Okay. Forbidden artifacts. We've kind of moved into the wild thornberries uh, area, which is fine because it was a lot more interesting than like Family Guy. What else could we do? Cannibal neighbors. Okay, sure. Anyone else? Try this. Try to change the setting or the primary character dynamic. Try to make that different. Where in chat? I'm looking at the chat feed right now. Oh, it didn't scroll down. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Post apocalypse. Oh, spell that right. Time travel. Now, they could still live in the suburbs and do those things, right? A post apocalyptic suburb. Or they could time travel around and come back to their home, right? So those are both possibilities. What about changing it entirely? How about try to make it not star a family? Who would it star if not a family? A couple of friends. Okay, yeah, friends, right? So some friends in the suburbs sound like maybe we'll say young adults back from college. Or something. Zombies. It could star zombies. Sure. It could. That's sort of an Edward Scissorhands um, esque take on this that zombies could live in the suburbs without anybody noticing. Because everybody's already kind of mentally a zombie there anyway. There you go. Yeah. Right? So you can start with this like plain, ordinary idea, but it begs you to change something. Right? It begs you to change something, because if you don't, then there's no inspiration at all. So this is sort of the two opposite ends of the spectrum that you can come from. You can come from the wild and out there, I have no idea what I'm going to end up side, and then start tacking it down more and more and more. Or you can start from the plain ordinary, this has been done a million times, and try to make it more wild. Okay, So two ends of this creativity spectrum, right? We've got boring and nobody cares, right? And we've got crazy. And we're trying to hit this balance. Which side do you want to start on? It's going to be different for every person, right? I tend to want to start on crazy and work my way towards boring because boring is often familiar. And so adding in boring parts to crazy for me is easier. Okay. Sometimes people want to start with a sort of boring template. Start with something safe that you know will work and keep adding things and then add a little bit more and add a bit more until you eventually strike this balance area. In order to get too far, you have to add too many things and that's unlikely. And with crazy, it's unlikely that you're going to start with crazy and you're going to take away so much stuff that you end over on the boring side. That would be pretty impressive, right? So one or the other, and you're trying to hit this balance point in the middle where it's got familiar elements that can be recognizable as a story or a genre, but then also interesting twists and complications that make you interested in finding out what's going to happen. If anybody's a Rick and Morty fan, that's what they did. Okay, They took this family formula cartoon and then added in, well, actually, all of that? <laughs> They added in all of that and this, maybe not this one, <laughs> right? They just added a whole bunch of crazy stuff to this thing to break up that formula and almost in sort of like taking it as a challenge to break up that formula as much as possible while still having it intact, okay? So those are kind of the two extreme approaches to doing this brainstorming thing. Any questions about that before we look at some concept art examples? Nope. Okay. Let's see what we got here. 
oh this is the the contest thing let's skip that for the moment so I was clicking on just randomly let's take a look at some people's galleries and see if we can find some designs this looks like might be challenging we got some black and white characters do we have any drawings no drawings okay this one loses let's try again um, we've got an environment no supporting stuff at all actually I know that this one is a school so they've probably got at least something like this so over on the side here it's a little tough to see but we've got this kind of rough actually those are just render passes those aren't roughs okay this one maybe loses too let's keep trying let's see okay so here's a nice finished three-dimensional character there's a rough polygon version but okay so here's someone else's concept art there's their painting. So this would count as concept art, but it's highly, highly polished concept art. This person took that and made it into this actual 3D model. Okay, so at least there's an example of going from one to the other. There we go. Here's a rough drawing of the original concept. You maybe find differences between the two. Actually, that is a pretty well executed illustration. So this doesn't even necessarily count as rough concept art. Rough concept art should look like stick figures, diagrams, um, rapid attempts to find some idea. Let's see his gallery, maybe we can find some. I can tell you right now he's probably gonna have far too polished of work, but let's try a couple, see if maybe. No, all his work is super polished. We're not actually seeing the rough steps. This is not um, atypical. You won't see these rough steps like displayed proudly because they're not something to be proud of yet. They're ideas. Is that Skeletor? It is Skeletor. That's cute. Okay, it looks nice, but not rough enough. Mm, nope. All of it very polished. I might strike out here. I don't know who's going to be brave enough to share this stuff. I could just go for my own stuff, but it's a little self serving to do that. Let's see. Can I find roughs of anything anywhere? Let's try a few of them. That one. Okay. Nope. Nothing to scroll. Sort of. Ink illustration. Nope. Nope. Sort of. This is like animation development, trying out facial expressions to see if the character is flexible and expressive enough for the purpose of the animation, then here's like a nice rendered version of them. Um, again, though, these are all very finished drawings, though we've got the whole cast and some different situations, like for whatever reason, this person needs to be on a bike a lot. Maybe they're like a bike messenger. Oh, they're a delivery girl. Okay, so that's important for exploration. Looks like we're sending, centering this around a diner. It's a cat diner over there. Here's a bunch of stuff that this character would typically be doing. So yeah, there's a bit of exploration here, but really this is still on the polished end of that. Not the rough side. Um, this is pretty interesting. So variations of props in a game. Um, this could be a good form of concept art. Kind of interesting to see. So we can see different kinds of chairs and benches. Whatever materials and colors these are made out of are probably thought of for a reason. Here we've got like what appears to be mermaid furniture. I don't know what this is, maybe crypt. And then this one seems like Egyptian or Greek or something. Hmm. And this one's like, um, what is it? The Heartless Kingdom Hearts for some reason. That's what that looks like. So yeah, this is a good example, although we're still very polished in these things. It's nice to see the variations and the differences. My guess is probably there's a customizable furniture set in some game or other, and they're kind of designing those sets. Okay. Let's see what this one was. Oh, this was just game art anyway. All right, I think I've got some stuff that I could show instead. So yeah, just recently, um, my students and I last year worked on a game project. This is examples of some of the concept art we did. Um, I was brought onto the project at the point where the character looked like the upper left-hand corner, and they had no art director and needed someone to do that. And so we redesigned the game until it looked like these characters with the big, large one over in the far right. And all of these different various drawings were stages in development. So one of the earlier ones would be the central lower one 
where we're trying to figure out proportions for his face, um, how we would treat him within the game as far as body was concerned. The requirement for the game was that the character had to be a cube collider, right? So only a cube. They had drawn a pretty substantial body and that was distracting from that fact. And so I gradually shrank the body more and more until he was basically just a head with a little tiny vestigial body sticking out the side. And then we played around with it to make it more playful. And then I codified some of the design elements so that the other artists could use it. Okay. So that's an example of concept art. Um, let's see, I got a second one. Here we go. Some of the enemy design and animation setup. Um, they had perfectly round enemies with a cube main character. And so we started to think about what that could be. For some reason, they had it in space already. And so we started to make all of the enemies robots. And that was just easy because you don't feel bad about killing robots. Uh, robots can explode and have lots of pieces. And you can do some really creative things that are not limited to living bodies. So we've got like shooter enemies and charging enemies and robots and stuff like that, satellites, mines, all of that stuff. And then over on the right, this is a breakdown of the kind of animations and pieces that we used for production to make it an animatable character, cheaply. Okay, this is what concept art is like to me. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah? Yep. Okay, cool. I think that's basically it except for our actual assignment. Okay. Do you guys need anything else explained or explored before we talk about the assignment? Cool. Let's talk about the assignment. We're going to come up with a theme right now. Okay. You'll be creating a dozen ideas based on a chosen theme. And we're going to choose that theme. If you want to work with others to bounce ideas off, that's fine. But you have to individually turn in 12 each. Okay, it's okay if they have a very similar kind of approach to them. That's fine. Just make sure you're the one who draws or paints them. That means that these are going to be rough sketches. Okay, that means that you have to draw and paint things. Uh oh, it'll be the first time that we do that that isn't just showing us stuff from the past. Don't worry if your drawings are bad, okay? Sometimes for a, a good concept, you just kind of need a diagram. So let's just say really quick, um, I'm gonna have a winged skull. So if I do, here's a thing with some chompers and some eyeballs, and I go like, there he is, there's a winged skull. Okay, that's my idea. It doesn't have to be much more complicated than that to get the idea across, okay? If you have the idea that, oh, these wings, they need to be bat wings. Then maybe you should look up, well, I just right clicked by accident. Maybe you should look up what bat wings look like. Okay, so let's do that. Bat wings. Okay, that's what bat wings look like. Here's what symbol cartoon bat wings look like. Here's like some sort of pattern, right? Like Halloween pattern. Here's an actual bat. Okay, you should collect and save these things so that you don't have to go searching for them over and over and over again. If you're looking to become a more professional kind of artist, this reference gathering is one of the most basic things you can learn to do right now. Get a folder, fill it full of images that are going to help you to draw stuff. Okay, so here in the Batwing thing I can see, oh, you know what, Batwings kind of have one corner in the middle of them right and then they've got a bunch of little sweepy bits with lines going out from that corner okay I can draw that so here then I would go eh 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 one two three four and it's and it looks better that way right so better than this thing over here so let me erase out most of that so now I can get a better idea and so now I can go one two eh, 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 eh. okay like that. At least now this looks like something as opposed to this one over here. Okay. I may also want to look up, okay, what's a skull look like then? Maybe I can't draw a skull very well. Skull. Here's a bunch of them. Sometimes you can find cartoon skulls, like examples. If you want to copy someone else's cartooning of something, then that's fine. Like here's a little 
cartoon skull. Here's an animal skull. Maybe you get inspired from this and say, hey, yeah, actually, maybe I want this thing to be an animal skull rather than a person's skull. But now you have to deal with the problems of figuring out how to draw like this animal skull, which is far more complicated. Okay. So for my point, I'm just going to get like that and say, oh, okay. So a skull has like cheekbones and bigger kind of eyes and then the mandible separate. You know what? We'll go with this one. This one's like a ceramic thing or something, right? So it's like a big boxy shape, kind of triangular, and like there's this shelf that sticks out, right? So then I go back to my art and I go, okay, so you want to be like there's this triangular kind of thing up here, and I didn't draw these eyes big enough like that. And then this part here kind of goes across, and I could just like this, and then the skull part could be a little bit bigger. And it's like it's improving by iteration, little bit by little bit, right? Getting a little bit closer. And then maybe I want to have this bottom bit as well. And it kind of sticks out over there somehow. Okay? Little by little, we can move towards something that is going to be more fleshed out, more well thought out. Um, also, if you get different kinds of reference, so some of this is anatomical, but let's do for drawing. Um, here's someone's stylized version of a skull. Maybe we like that. Maybe we don't. Um, here's like a highly stylized one, right? Maybe we want to use something like that. You can represent those as well. Here's like some very, very simple, almost Day of the Dead skulls, and that's kind of cute. So maybe I like that for some reason. So we can have different takes on the same thing, and that will help us to narrow it down. So like this looks okay and all, but I don't know. Maybe it's just a little bit too strange. So let's do this instead. I'm going to do that, and this, and this, and that. That's my skull now. Big round ball with like teeth cutting out. Why? I don't know, because I liked it. And then I'm going to have wings, but they're going to be tiny little wings, and they're going to be detached, just kind of floating there. Cool. There we go. So now I've got another concept. Same thing, like all the nouns are the same, right? But now the way that I've implemented it is different. And maybe because I drew this eye a little bit smaller, I go, hey, you know what? I kind of like that. I'm going to make it even smaller. I'm going to do it like this. See if that looks kind of cool. Or maybe I make both the eyes like that and start to get some expression in there. All right? So that's kind of what you need to do first, is you come up with these word-based concepts, right? And then you start to gather reference so that you know what you're drawing. And check it out. Some people have done some really cool, simple kind of shape exploration of a skull here. Or you can find things that are a little bit more professional or from movies and you know other media that you already like. Uh, all art kind of borrows from all other art. You don't have to come up with something completely unique. Sometimes people do this and they find, oh no, Every possible caricature of a skull has already been done by someone. I'll never be unique. Boo hoo. Uh, no, you won't. Sorry. You won't be unique. <laughs> someone has done it before somewhere. Don't worry about it too much. Just think about what you like and why. Okay? Here's some really cool stylization. Right. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to come up with those ideas, gather reference, right? And then start adding these extra ideas to it to come up with 12 finished drawings you should try fairly quickly to sketch out a bunch of different attempts. So we'll do one of these skulls is going to be really square and have a big flared jaw like that and I'd add all these details. One of them is going to be really round only it's going to have a little tiny jaw and also I'm going to put the bottom on there and just have it float and I do some variations of that. Um, I'll try one where maybe I have the top of the skull removed for some reason and there's a brain in there like that. I'll give them big funny teeth for some reason in that one. And you just want to kind of do a bunch of these, right? You'll find that you're attracted to certain ones for certain reasons, right? Whatever they are, then you set those aside and you start exploring those more in the next iteration. Okay? So if for some reason I really like this idea, then I'll try to do this differently. Maybe I turn them into a mug or something, or maybe I have the flap 
of his skull plate available there, or I put a big glass dome over it, right? So that I can see the skull, but it's still enclosed for some reason. Who knows why I might choose that, but you start to do variations of your own concepts. This is all moving you towards the final dozen, the final 12 that you're gonna show us. Don't show us as your final 12, your rapidly done half-hearted attempts to think of something at all, right? So these that I'm doing right here are my roughest concept and probably they're not gonna be the thing that I show you at the end of my, um, my work. But that's good to show also as a separate document to say, here's the breadth that I explored and then here's where I ended up at the end. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. Yeah. So I'm saying you do not have to turn in anything but 12 drawings. Okay. You do not have to turn in anything but 12 drawings. But if you provide us a second sheet of the roughs, it can be interesting and instructive to see how you were thinking. All right. And I would prefer if you did that because it makes it much nicer. Okay. Um, you don't have to ink them. You don't have to paint them. They can be as finished as these drawings over here or these drawings over here. But if you want to fully paint and ink things, then that's great. I think that's fantastic, but don't spend most of your time doing that. Okay. Um, I did find these examples really briefly of just sort of some exploration of some bears, some turnarounds for animation expression sheets, and then a set of final bear designs that this person did. And you can find this quite a bit with any sort of like um, television, uh, cartoon or uh, movie uh, animation. There's usually a lot of concept that goes into it. Okay. Questions about any of that stuff? Are we ready to pick a theme? Um, I just have a question on, we have to uh, turn in 12. I just wanted to ask if you can explain how we like add all 12 together in a certain or in a single uh, submission or if it, it's going to be like you see 12 single submissions. Oh, please don't turn in 12 single submissions. Please just draw them on a grid or draw them on different layers and then put them together at the end. Right? So I would love to get one document that you've chopped into like let's say two by six rows maybe. So that would number 12 or three by four rows or something like that. So let's do three rows, one, two, three, four. So this would be 12 also. Do something like that. Also do number them. Uh, I believe I put that in the instructions. I didn't just mention it though. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Instructions, where do I say that? Do I ever say that? I hope I did. Well, I don't see it stated here, but I would love it if you number them. I think it's under requirements. Where? Oh, here. Be sure to number concepts. Yeah, there we go. Please do that. Because then we, we can say number five, for instance, one, two, three, four, five, has a great looking hat or something. It's going to be way easier than saying the fat one with the kind of limp and the the lunch pail. We don't want to do that. So just number them. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Anybody else questions? Okay. Let's come up with a theme. So here's how I would like to come up with a theme. Name a genre that you like and then we will name a setting or object and we will get it from there. So a genre, I'm looking for a short list and we'll take a quick straw poll. Sci-fi. So are, yeah. So are you going to be picking the topic or would you like us to pick the topic? We are going to come up with a list and I'm gonna help you pick. Then everyone's gonna use the same topic. High fantasy would be like Lord of the Rings, right? Or is that low fantasy? Okay, so high fantasy is like Lord of the Rings, knights, elves, wizards, and stuff. Low fantasy is like medieval, but maybe there's a witch. Okay, so we got two genres. Anyone else want to action? Can you be a little bit more specific? 
action with superheroes, action with John McClane barefoot in a glass-filled office, action with babies breaking out of daycare. Like what? Like John Wick, so action, uh, crime, violence. Sure. Horror. Horror. Can you be more specific with horror? Horror. Like Friday the Thirteenth. Slasher. Slasher. Yeah. Okay. So slasher is any time that teenagers are menaced by some monster. It happens a lot, more than you'd think. Oh, Robert, your headset's still buzzing at us. Kick those bees out. Okay, so that's good enough. We'll start with that. Um, actually, let's specify sci-fi a little bit. Are we talking about aliens, or are we talking about time travel, or are we talking about chemistry, mad scientists, and reanimating the dead? aliens okay now let's come up with an object so this is really really broad which is great but let's come up with a ordinary object or a common object that could exist in all four of these genres like a chair okay a chair is usually a good one to start with because now I want you to imagine a sci-fi chair You've probably done it. You're probably thinking of like a captain's chair or like an examination table where someone's going to have an alien burst out of their chest or, you know, something with a lot of straps in an emergency pod or something. Think of a high fantasy chair. You're probably going to think of a throne or a bench in a tavern. Key is a good one. Key is good. Let's do a key too. Uh, weapon is too much. Uh, we'll do weapons later. Everyone always wants to do weapons because they're cool. But because they're cool, they're also hard to do early concept for. People get too precious. I'm looking for a really mundane thing. No, not a xylophone. You want to try 12 different xylophones? You want to torture yourself. A phone? Can a phone work in high fantasy? I guess it can, but we got to be really broad. Cup is better. You say Rubik's Cube? That's like a toy. We could do toy. Toy would be great because you can have sci-fi toys, um, high fantasy medieval toys. Crime violence toys would be interesting in Slasher as well. Um, I already did key. I wrote that one down. Dice is pretty good. Shoe is probably too hard to draw. Cup is maybe book. Books are all the same except for their cover and details and stuff though. Let's do let's do cup. Okay. So hopefully you can imagine how every single one of those would exist in every single one of those genres, right? Slasher horror cup. Let's just very quickly explore that one. We might have a fast food cup because the slasher works at a gas station. Or we might have a fast food cup because it's in a theater is where all the murders are happening. Um, a cup might be something like a canteen or a water bottle if we're at a lakeside uh, camp via Jason. Or a cup might be something in a home if it was like Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street, and they're getting it from an actual cabinet. Um, a toy in high fantasy might be a hand-stitched burlap sack doll or it might be something whittled out of wood or it could even be a small magical thing with gems right a key in sci-fi could be lots of things it could be a key card it could be a holographic thing that needs to unlock it could be a more standard uh, metallic kind of gear like key that needs to fit into a mechanism or something or it could even be a key pad such as the thing that you put your hand on to unlock something a retinal scanner a chair can work in every single one of these. A chair in an action crime violence thing might be like in Pulp Fiction where they strap a guy to a chair and then slash him with a razor. Or it might be something like an electric chair. Or it could be a fancy kingpin-like chair behind a desk. Right? Hopefully, it's as easy for you to come up with these things as it is for me. Every object being as plain as it is 
can get a huge amount of life when applied to all of these different genres and all the characters and settings in these genres. Uh, we're done with the objects. You can stop with the objects. Uh, okay, so we're going to pick from this very short list, right? One through four on the genres and one through four on the objects. So take a moment to think about the possibilities that you like the most and then very quickly we'll have a little vote. Okay, and I'll do it like this. I'm going to put a comment in the concept art channel. This is this is the vote. There's my comment, and I'm going to use emojis that you can just click on to vote for these. So we'll have a robot represent sci-fi. Oops, I got a comment on it. Not do this. Comment. So we'll have a robot represent the sci-fi idea. Do I have a wizard here somewhere? Let's see. Yes. I typed in whiz, it didn't work. Magic, ah, here it is. Here's a mage, so that'll be for the high fantasy. Crime and violence, crime, police? Uh, I got a police card. That'll be close enough. And then for horror, uh, knife, okay? Whichever one of those genres you like the most, click that button or actually click as many as you want because if you click them all it doesn't matter if you click none of them it doesn't matter click as many of those buttons as you want don't click the ones that you don't like go for it give you a couple minutes here click a bunch of those buttons and I'll make the next one after we get the result for this one look at those numbers look at those numbers go slasher is a little bit behind here Got a lot of robots and a lot of high fantasy. Oh. Everyone's just going back and forth, can't make up their mind. Yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> okay. Has everybody voted? Yes, I think. You sure? Everybody voted? Everybody voted who wanted to? All right, so based on that, high fantasy wins. So that'll be the one. We're going to use high fantasy. To clarify that for anyone who maybe doesn't know what the term is exactly, we're talking about knights, wizards, castles. You couldn't click on any of them? What'd you want to click on? Which one do you want to click on? Uh, sci fi. Okay. Oh, I'll take my vote away from there, so now they're even. Oh, there it goes. Someone did it. Okay, so they're even. Or I could just pick one. Or you can just pick one, uh, <laughs> Sci-fi tends to be boxier, square, or more industrial things, so they are a little... E no, not both. Um, mixing genres is going to make this harder for you. Um, Sci-fi stuff tends to be boxier, more industrial things like pipes and conduits and stuff like that, which I would say is easier to draw, but maybe not as fun. And high fantasy tends to be more rural, um, handcrafted things that are a little bit wobbly and inconsistent. So it's really forgiving, but also could be a little bit of a mind job to kind of figure out exactly how you draw those things. So... Hmm. We'll just go with fantasy. We'll go with high fantasy. Okay. The one that we had first. Okay. I think that one has enough reference that you can find games and movies to find lots of stuff with. All right. So second one, we're going to do chair, key, toy, and cup. So second vote here. And do we have a chair? We do. Do we have a key yes a toy no something close enough to a toy yeah teddy there it is teddy bear and they're all brown for some reason a cup cup glass uh there we go all right, so go ahead and click on which object, which high fantasy object you would like to be ours. Wow, key jumped way the heck up there immediately. 
Okay, go ahead and place your vote by clicking on that. Cup gang. <laughs> Nobody likes chair for some reason. Key to success. All right, a couple seconds more for anybody who wants to chime in. I'll just put this over here for the recording just so people can see it. That was the first vote. That was the second vote. That's kind of interesting, huh? Uh, all right, so it looks like key. High fantasy key. Okay, you did it. <laughs> so that's what our theme is going to be, a high fantasy key. So think about the kinds of personalities that might need a key. So we've got like magical people. We've got royalty. We've got commoners. We've got prisoners. And then things that maybe you don't normally think of as a key, like a rune could be a key. Or, I don't know, like a sword could act as a key potentially. Uh, maybe the hilt of a sword or like a necklace could have a key on it. That sort of thing. Okay. Think about materials. Like what should the thing be made of? Should it be jeweled? Should it be wood? Should it be iron? Should it be, I don't know how you'd make it living. I guess bone was formerly living. Could a key be made of, I don't know, plant material? Yeah. Sure, it could somehow. Bring the land of magic. Yeah. Could it be made of like prismic light? If we're going down that road. Ooh, fancy prismic light key. That's a great commoner prismic light key you've got there, Harold the Farmer. Where'd you get it? Sent away. Fantasy Amazon. So be thinking about that sort of thing, but this is what you're delivering on, 12 drawings of a high fantasy key of some kind. If you want to narrow it down to a particular user and have all of them be royalty, that's fine with me. In fact, I think that based on my advice earlier, narrowing the field is better than not narrowing the field. So if all of them are going to be uh, prison or you know castle keys made of common materials. That's fine. Play with the shapes and design and stuff. Or they could all be magical and be vastly different. If you don't want to do that, instead you want to explore all the possibilities with shape or with material, then you could say, I'm going to try to think up 12 different bone keys or 12 different jeweled keys or 12 different wooden keys or something like that. Um, that would be fine with me. Just make sure that you deliver on the high fantasy and the key object being the theme. Okay, and I'm going to write that into the homework so that we all have it. It's right here. High fantasy key. And we'll underline that so everybody can find that. And there it is, saved up. Okay, on Friday for you guys, I will likely do some ideation of exactly. Um, it matters for what you want to draw, but does it matter for the assignment? No. Now, if you make the, the key out of something that can't exist in a high fantasy setting, then maybe you messed up. I don't exactly know what that would be like. Adamantium from like, you know, Marvel movies. That would be strange, right? But there's very little in the way that of things that wouldn't fit as long as you have details to fit into a high fantasy thing. High fanta key? <laughs> That's bad. Very bad. You should feel bad. I don't. <laughs> so we could basically make up any material we want and make the key out of that? Um, I don't know what that means. Like, the world I live in has metal and wood and stone, and it doesn't have, like, flabonium. And I don't know what that would be. It would be something I've never seen before. So, I mean, 
So if I want to make up 12 different fantasy keys, um, maybe like one. So like if I made 12 different uh, art pieces of keys, yep. and you know it's magical. Yep. They're different. They can be different material, like bone, or I can make one out of. Yep. Um, maybe like a sword key. Yep. Like just, just high fantasy styling. Yes. Yeah, really. Yes, you can. But based on my earlier advice, what I would do personally, and what I'm probably going to do on Friday, is pick one from this category and pick one from this category, and all twelve of my drawings are going to fit within that because limiting the possibilities tends to help the creative process and get a better design. I would just say my high fantasy key is going to be a royalty um, use key made of bone. And so all 12 of mine would try to implement those additional descriptors as well because it forces me to do more interesting um, designs and thoughts to have 12 different high fantasy keys that are also used by royalty and made of bone. Now I've got to think through that too. And I like that and it's going to come up with something interesting. If they're all different, then basically you just have to draw one of a magical thing and one of a commoner thing. And it's not very interesting, it's just different. But you can do either one. I won't stop you. One of those is not better than the other. Nate is dead set on making a xylophone key, so shine on you crazy diamond. Make your xylophone key. It's like a keytar. Is it okay if we make the key somewhat metaphorical? Um, how metaphorical? Like the key to the throne is marriage, so you do a marriage scene? No. <laughs> no. Imagine that this is a production and your, um, your lead artist said, we need a design for the high fantasy keys in our movie. And you come back with a, a scene of people getting married. You're fired. All right. So it's okay if the key is symbolic in the sense that this amulet, which is not key shaped, is the key to something. Okay. That's fine but not like a, a scene instead of an object. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions about this assignment, about the process, etc.? Then you are free to go and enjoy your week until Friday when we will meet again and, ex and discuss more interesting, exciting concept art.